Hey everyone, this is Jace with Elevate Strategies here to help you conquer the NPTE. Today we're going to go over some pulmonary stuff, uh, specifically some pleural issues and atelectasis. So we're going to define some terms, um, pneumothorax, hemothorax, pleural effusion, and atelectasis. And we're going to describe the difference between pleural problems and atelectasis. And then we're going to understand which way the trachea would deviate for each condition and why. It's kind of a specific topic that we're going over today, but there's a few questions that have come up on this. And if you can get one more question right in your cardiopulmonary topic on the NPTE, then it's worth it. All right, first let's define our terms. So we got three terms here, right? Pneumothorax, hemothorax, and pleural effusion. And then we got a term over here, okay? The three on the right, we're gonna clump together because those are all plural problems. There's something wrong with the plural space. And then atelectasis is kind of on its own over here. We'll explain why in a little bit, uh, but there's a reason that we're gonna separate these guys. Okay. So before we really define those terms, we got to do a little bit of an anatomy lesson. The first question we want to ask ourselves is what is the plural space? Well, for starters, it's a terrible name because it shouldn't be a space. Um, it, we call it a space. It really shouldn't be a space. And if something's in the space, it's not good. Okay. So essentially the pleura is a double lining around the lungs. And the main idea of this is that the pleura allows the lungs to expand without causing friction. So if you think about the fact that our lungs are consistently expanding and contracting and expanding and contracting all day and all night long, if we didn't have that pleura space in between the lungs and our rib cage, basically the lungs would rub on the ribs and probably puncture it. So that's what the pleural space is, but the problem really comes when the pleural space actually becomes a space. So in its normal state, my analogy is, if you remember all the way back to biology, working with microscopes, okay, you have your slide, then you put a little drop of water and you have your specimen and you put a film on top, right? So there's not really any space in the slide or we can't see it you know there's something there, some space there because there's something in between, but basically it should just kind of rub on itself. And there's no space that we could see without a microscope. Well, that's what the pleura should be like. It should just be this lining that allows the lungs to expand collapse without any space. But when things like fluid, blood or air fill the space, we get problems. So here's an image of the three plural problems that I want you to know for the NPTE. So these three terms are the ones we're trying to define. Pneumothorax, which is air in the plural space. Hemothorax, which is blood in the plural space. And pleural effusion, which is simply some sort of fluid in the plural space. So it's actually not that hard to define these terms if you just break apart the words. Pneum is air, hemo is blood, and then effusion, like you already know what that means, right? Usually you think of swelling or edema or something like that. So some sort of fluid. Okay, usually plural problems result in lung collapse. This is why I want you to know these terms and why it's such a big deal. And this is because if you've got something in that plural space, which we said surrounds the lungs, and it shouldn't be there, it's going to put pressure from the outside in, almost like we're taking the lung in our hand and we're just crushing it. So that means that if you have a plural space problem, that trachea is going to deviate to the opposite side because we're taking outside and we're pushing in. Okay. So we have defined all three of our plural problems. We also have to define the word atelectasis because that was that random one hanging out on the left side over here. This is also known as a lung collapse, but it's a specific type of collapse. And basically what happens is the alveoli collapse, okay? But there's varying degrees of atelectasis. So we could have a certain part of the lung where just those alveoli are damaged and collapse on themselves. Or you can have enough alveoli that the entire lung collapses on itself. But what really matters, at least for the NPTE, is the mechanism. So we said that the pleura space was outside crushing in. Well, the atelectasis is almost the opposite. It's as if we went inside the lung and we punctured it, like we popped it with a pin. So you end up with this like negative pressure inside. 
So if we pop our lung from the inside and you get a negative pressure, it's going to deviate that trachea to the same side. Okay, so here is our summary. All of this was basically just to say that if you have a pleural problem, like pneumothorax, hemothorax, or a pleural space, you're going to see the trachea deviate to the opposite side. Okay, if you have atelectasis, sometimes also referred to as lung collapse in questions, you're going to see the trachea deviate to the same side. Okay. We kind of talked about this as a very specific topic, but you know what? If you can get one more question right, awesome. And even better than that, if you can recognize this in the real world and know what's going on, potentially you could save somebody's life. It's a little extreme, but it's worth knowing this stuff. Okay, the last piece of today, we do have a practice question for you guys to try. It's gonna be in the notes as usual in the box below. So give your hand at that. If you have any questions, you can always give us an email. All right, well, that is it for today and we'll see you guys next week. Happy studying.